الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله جزاك الله خير for attendance so I want to speak about habits and addictions and how to break them obviously habits and addictions in haram now there's not a person on this earth except that he sins the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us كُلُّ بْنِ آدَمَ خَطَّاءٌ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَّابُونَ All the children of Bani Adam sin. But the best of the sinners are those who repent. So we're not getting away from sin. But what we need to try to do is repent and not insist on the sin until it becomes an addiction. Because once a sin becomes an addiction, it becomes really, really, really hard to stop that sin. A habit. If you take off the H from habit, what do you get? A bit. You take off the A, what do you get? Bit. Take off the B, what do you get? It. It still stays with us for a long time unless we kick out of it. Now, there's many people, they're doing all sorts of sins. Some may be major, some may be minor, and they're addicted to it and they want to get out, but they find it difficult. They find it difficult because it's so easy to do sins nowadays. There's the internet. There's places to go where haram happens and everything comes to the internet anyway into the house. So the sins of the hand can be happening. The sins of the eyes can be happening. The sins of the ears can be happening all from our smartphones, all from, all from the internet. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us. He said, even of the little sins, he said, beware of the small sins, with meaning, because they will gather to destroy a person. They will gather and they will gather and they will gather and they will destroy a person because they will become so big. And the Prophet Wasallam gave the example of people who come and they set up camp on, on, at flat ground and then people go away and bring some sticks, some pieces of wood and they bring them and gather them together and then you can make a fire to cook something. So the small sins, even the small sins, they will gather and they can destroy a person. So... And the probability of dying, if we spend our life and our days sinning so much, the probability of us dying, doing a sin, is, is very high. And we don't want to die having done a sin, especially when we hear about people who died in sajda, who died in salah, who died while raising money for charity, who died while going to the masjid. Do we want to be of those who die doing the sin? Doing the sin, the sin that we couldn't break out of? So... The first thing to do, I want to give some tips on what we can do to get out of this cycle, the cycle of sins. There may be nobody here who's in a cycle of addiction, but maybe you know people who are, and you could, inshallah, follow the video, inshallah. Okay, so the first thing is recognize, and just before I start, I wanted to mention, I wanted to mention, there may be one point, there may be two points that you could you know, use to take yourself away from the sin. It doesn't mean you're going to, you know, use all the points. So maybe one thing or two things that hit your mind and think, you know, I'm going to try that to stay away from the addictions that I'm in. Okay. So the first thing is recognize and accept that the sin is a sin. Now you might think, what am I talking about? Because there's people, when you tell them, brother, that's a sin, do you know it's haram? They say, oh, it's not haram, bro. We're living in the land of the kuffar. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. So it's no problem. We can do it just sometimes here and there. We can do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Don't worry. Don't be so strict. No, no, no problem with this. Everybody does it. Now, this person is in serious trouble because he's not even agreeing or admitting to the sin. He's not even agreeing that I'm doing a sin. You see, if you admit to yourself that you're doing a sin, you're miles better than the one who's trying to justify his sin and say there's no problem. Because justifying a sin, it makes you a bad person, but admitting a sin is halfway to rectification. If you admit a sin, you're halfway there. you just got to do a bit more now to get away from that sin. At least you admit it. So admit to yourself that this is a sin and it's haram and I need to get out of it. Number two, think about who you, who we are disobeying. We're not just disobeying our boss at work. We're not disobeying our mother, our father, or our brother, or sister. We're disobeying the Lord of creation. The Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is above the heavens. We are disobeying him. And he is al-basir. He sees everything. He knows what's in our heart. He knows what's going through our mind. He knows the difficulties and struggles. He knows what's going on. 
He sees everything. He's a raqib He's a sami the one who hears. He can hear every single speech that we are doing that's haram. We're speaking to the opposite gender in a haram way, flirting, chatting, and doing haram things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sami He hears everything. And he knows before we're going to do it, that we're going to, that when we do that same. He is al-khaliq. He's made you and me. He's al razaq He's given us eyes. He's given us the ears. He's given us, us the mouth. He's given us the hands. He's given us the feet that we use to disobey him. So if we're about to do a sin, if we think, I'm using the blessing of my eyes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me for worshipping him, I'm using that blessing in a wrong way, we might make us think twice and just lower our gaze. If we're going to type something that's haram, yeah, or listen to something that's haram, if we think that who gave us this blessing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does he not deserve that we use these blessings for his sake and not for haram? It will make us think twice about doing those sins. And how am I going to show my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? If I'm doing these sins, I'm stuck in this sin again and again. How am I going to show myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He asks us that why did you do this sin? How, what are we going to say? Can I face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, so, well, I might want to just not do this, that sin. And this, we can use these words, inshallah, to get us out of these problems and addictions that, you know, many, many people are in. Number three, this is just the theory here first. Number three is, who is going to make us stay away from the sin? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a sincere dua from the bottom of our heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've created me. I'm weak and I need your help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please get me out of the sin. Enable me to go out of the sin. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kun, then it is. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be, it is. So we're asking the one who, when he gives a command, be, it is. We're asking the one who can change the brain, way our brain works. You know, he can, he can change it and make us think in a different way and make that thing that was looking really appealing to us, he can make it look very unappealing to us. He can make it look very ugly. So we're asking that one to save us and take us out of this problem. And then once we've done dua, we have to make effort. We can't just make a dua and then continue our same old routine. We have to then make an effort. Which I'll come on to, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in um, chapter 24, verse 21, part of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and had it not been for the grace of Allah and his mercy on you, not one of you would have been pure from sins. Not one of you would have been pure from sins. But Allah purifies who he, will, who he wills, and Allah is all here or all knower. So if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would not be staying away from the sins. If it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing would, we wouldn't be doing anything good. And when we do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we do it? So there's a way, there's an etiquette of making dua. I've done a talk previously on the etiquettes of making dua. But if our money is haram, if our money is haram, our dua is not going to get accepted. All the money that we are earning is haram, and we're eating with that money, we're eating haram food. We're nourished with haram, we're earning haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to accept that dua. Because everything that has to do with our money, our income is haram. So we need to check that. And is our income haram? Is it not haram? Also, one sheikh said, he said, if we really want something, if we really want something, and we've not asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depths of the night, i.e. in the hajjad before fajr, then we don't really want it. If we've not asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hajjad, we don't really want that thing we, that we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. So we would wake up at three o'clock for a, a flight. We had a flight to wherever, a holiday. We would wake up at three o'clock for that, but for a dua, we don't wake up before Fajr. But if we really, really want it, dua in the time of the Hajjad is an excellent time to do. And number three, and number five, our Salah. Our Salah is the best deed we can do. And missing our Salah is the worst we, deed we can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about Salah, he says, Inna salata tanha anil wal munkar. Indeed, the Salah will take a person away from fahsha, like bad lewd acts, wal munkar, and you know, haram things. So the salah will take us away from lewd, bad acts, and will take us away from haram things. 
So the salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell, is telling us the salah will take us away from those things. If we read our salah properly, if we read our salah properly, then we know I'm going to have a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in two hours. How can I do this sin? How can I do this sin? How can I show my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Maghrib time, right? In a few hours, for example, or a few minutes. And how can I do this sin now and then show my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Maghrib time? How can I do this sin and then show my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Fajr time? How can I do this sin after Isha? So it makes a person stay away from the, the bad things that we don't want the people to know that we do. Okay. Also, the salah can take a person away from the sin like this. He knows he's got to read Fajr at five o'clock. Now, if he can't stay awake after Isha for three hours, four hours, watch a film, watch something wrong, do something wrong, type something wrong, listen to something wrong, when he knows he's got to get to sleep early in order to wake up a Fajr in the morning. So the Salah is going to take a person away from sinning like that as well. And there could be many, many other ways. So these are some of the um, sort of theory. So number one, recognizing and ad admitting that the thing is wrong. Think about who you're disobeying. Three was pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us away from this cycle of sin. Number five is make the salah good, which, was co which we've covered. And now I just want to give some practical, practical steps that people will be able to take to get themselves out of the sin. It could be drugs, it could be drinking, it could be yeah, drugs is addictive. These things are addictive. Everybody knows, whoever, whoever's been on drugs, it's addictive. Drinking can be addictive. Going to the clubs, the haram clubs, addictive. And then you have things on the internet and there's everything on the internet. So looking at haram can be addictive. Listening to haram, listening to music, listening to bad things can be addictive. Speaking to people who we're not supposed to be speaking to and making that a regular cycle every night, every week, getting on the chat and chatting to people who we shouldn't even be speaking to, haram. So there's so many addictive things. And with the internet, it's become even worse because somebody can do it in the bedroom by himself. Nobody even knows he's doing it. And he might appear to be a good Muslim from outside. Okay? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us away from these sins. Number one, practical steps, inshallah. First thing, Believe you can do it. Believe you can get out of the sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. It's the last verse of Surah, um, Surah Al-Baqarah. The last verse. لا يك... Part of the last verse. لا يكلف, الله... لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't burden a soul beyond what he can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give us a test that we can't resolve, that we can't pass. So if we are in a situation and we're thinking, how can I get out of this? Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability to get out of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability to get out of it. Don't have that, I can't do this. Because whoever says, I can't do this, he's defeated himself. He's defeated himself. His enemy is himself. He's closed the doors on himself and he's proven to himself that he can't do it. So he's not going to do it because he doesn't believe he can do it. I give an example. If you're in a little hole that is one foot deep, just one foot deep, all you need to do is take one step and get out. If you believe you can't do it, you're not going to do it. You'll still be in that hole because you believe you can't do it. You defeated yourself. So we need to get out of this defeated mentality, this defeated mentality that I'm too bad, I cannot get out of this. Of course you can get out of it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give you a test that you can't get out of. So number one, believe you can do it. Have that positive frame of mind that inshallah, I can do it. And inshallah, I will do it. Remember, we've made our dua. Number two, we made our dua, but things don't fall from the sky. Make dua for money and things are not going to fall down from the sky. You have to go out and you have to work for money. Yeah, you have to go out and work for money. Similarly, things do not just happen by themselves. You have to make an effort. So one of the, making, one of the things to do, to do to make the effort, if you can do it, is just stop it immediately. Just turn around and think about those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. I need to stay away from this sin. Cut it off completely. Cut it off completely. But that's hard to do in an addiction. It's hard to do in an addiction. But if you can, make an effort and cut it off completely. In order to cut it off completely, you will need to 
leave the places that the haram is done. So don't go to those places that haram is done. Leave the company of those people who are making you go to those haram things or making you do those haram things. For example, a drug addiction. Those friends will ring and say, come on, what's wrong with you? You've become a sheikh now. You've got a beard. What's wrong with you? You're not, you're not joining us anymore. We were pals in school. You're not joining us anymore. What's going wrong? We have to cut that. We have to cut that thing and say, brother, I've left that life now. I'm sorry, I can't can't do it anymore. I know a brother who used to be on drugs and he told me that when he left it was difficult because his friends used to keep coming to his house knocking on his door come on what's wrong with you come we're just going for a bit or oh, two minutes no problem. He had to cut the friendships not like cut them and break friends but quit that company. He no longer associated with those people when they came around to call for him and said let's go he would say no because if you don't say no you go with them how are you going to stop? So leave the place, leave the company of those people. These are the things that will help you stay away from those sins. Number four, if the, if the haram has to do with the internet, or it has to do with a particular app on the phone, then honestly, you don't need the app. If Facebook is causing you to have problems with the opposite gender and speak in haram um, words, then delete it. If other applications, speaking up, chatting applications, even if it's WhatsApp, if that application has caused you to have haram contact with um, the opposite gender, then honestly, do away with it or block those, block those contacts. Block those contacts is maybe easier to do, okay? Block those contacts so you can no longer, you know, get involved, so they can no longer invite you. Block the contacts or change your number or something. Or if you can't, delete the application. What I'm trying to say is delete the means of the sin. It's a TV and this addiction on the TV, try to get rid of the TV. You can't or block, get somebody to block those channels. Get somebody to block those channels. Do something, put some filters on, do something, or don't even have the TV if you can. Or put the TV in the living room only. So you don't have that quiet time with the TV alone. So, okay, delete the app, delete the means basically. Number five is if it's difficult because people who are addicted, it's really difficult for them. They can't get out and they want to get out. One of the things you can do is reduce the frequency of the sin. Reduce the frequency of the sin. So say, for example, there is some sin on the internet, for example, instead of once every night. I'm not saying it's halal, but I'm saying if you do it like once every two nights or three nights, you miss some time out. Reduce the frequency. So, for example, every night, Monday night, Tuesday night, when you start Tuesday night, and then Wednesday night comes, try to miss out Wednesday night. If you can't, just try to make it happen less. Reduce the frequency of the sin because once you start reducing the frequency, you start getting um, used to life without it, and you fill that time with something else. And then that something else, some blessing, maybe you're reading Quran, that might start taking over your nights. So eventually you, you read Quran on Tuesday and then you think, oh, you know what? Quran is really good. Let's read it on Wednesday. Let's read it on Thursday. Now you reduce the sin to once a week. Now you're doing the sin once a week and then slowly, slowly, once every two weeks, once every month and Ramadan comes and then you think, you know what, man, I'm hardly even doing that sin. Just get out of it now completely. So this is one technique as well, just to reduce the frequency of the sin. If it's with cigarettes or it's with drugs, reduce the frequency that is happening hoping that I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm on the way out from this vortex of, you know, of um, addiction. Number six, start some good habit in replacement of that time when you would do that sin. So if it's going out at a certain time, replace that by reading Quran, doing some dhikr, even if you're playing with you know, your brothers and sisters, play with them or play with your children or do something and, you know, Start a good habit in place of that bad habit. And this, you might start enjoying that good habit. You're making dua as well continuously, but now you're making effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those people who make effort. Okay, so the person has made an effort now. He's doing good deeds at that same time that he would have done the haram. He might just start doing dhikr and he thinks, you know what? For five minutes, I'm going to do dhikr first. I'm doing dhikr. Now do I really feel like going to that sin? No, I'm going to continue doing dhikr. Or I'm just going to go to sleep. Go to sleep. Get an early night and reduce the frequency that way, okay? Another thing to do, number seven, 
is increase in doing good deeds. If there's a sin and you can't get out of it, you're totally stuck and you can't get out of it. After a bit, you have a, the urge to do that sin again. There's just that urge and then you do that sin again. A week passes, you have another urge. You keep and cannot get out of it. Then try just increase in doing other good deeds. Because many times the shaitan, he will get the person and say, you do this sin regularly. Why are you going to read Salah for? Why are you going to go to the masjid for? Why are you going to be a good Muslim when you're doing these bad things? Would you like the people to see you doing these other bad things? Ignore the shaitan. Okay, he's going to try to make you stop doing anything good. So increase in doing good. Start reading more books. Start reading more Quran. Going to lectures. Helping people. Doing a lot of good. If you don't have a beard, you know, beard is good. Grow the beard. Okay. <laughs> Grow a beard. Trust me, it keeps you away from certain things. It keeps people away from you as well. Okay. So increase in doing good things. And then what will happen is because you're doing so much good, you might just look at yourself one day in the mirror and think, you're doing all these good things. You're doing so much of these good things. And you've still got this one addiction, right? That's spoiling everything because you're still doing it. So you have to choose. It's either my deeds or it's the addiction. Which one do I want to keep? And then you just, you know, if, you, if you're doing a lot of deeds, you'll just say, you know what, I'm going to continue this life of doing good deeds. There's no room for this addiction anymore. I'm just going to cut it out now. You're so good. You're so used to doing the good deeds. And you're doing so many. You'll just look at yourself in the mirror and feel guilty. Are you really? Are you for real? You're doing all this and then you're still doing those haram things. So this is one other technique um, that people could use to get out of this addiction. And also number eight is... When you're doing the sin, when we're doing the sin, have this thing in the mind that what happens if the angel of death comes right now and takes my life? The Prophet وسلم, said, al bil that, okay, call, that the actions are judged by the last actions. If I read all my salah in the day, but I died doing drinking alcohol, for example, or chatting somebody up that I should not chat, or looking at something haram and I'm addicted to that, and I die at that moment, how is the angel of death going to appear to me? In a really good way? In a really beautiful way? Or in a really scary, horrible way? Depending on the deed that I was doing just before I died. Will I have the ability, if the angel of death comes, will I have the ability to say, La ilaha illallah, while I'm doing this sin? So just think that while I'm doing this sin, I could die. So just put it on pause. Just don't do it today. Be lazy. You know, like be lazy in doing good things. Be lazy in doing the bad things. Say, you know, can't be bothered I'll, tomorrow or the day after, no problem. And tomorrow and the day after, come and think, oh, I'll just push it off a bit more, push it off a bit more. I don't want to die tonight doing this sin, so just push it off to another day. Once you keep on brushing it off, inshallah, it will go away. Inshallah. So then we'll just some of some practical tips that people could use to um, keep themselves away from addiction. I just want to leave you with two verses of the Quran. And inshallah, I will sort of end on these two verses. The first verse is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's actually in two verses, but I'm just reading the part that I'm talking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make for him a way out. Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't think that when you try stopping these deeds, stopping the haram, that you're on your own. You're not on your own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help will come, but we have to take the first step. We have to take the first step. Don't sit back and say Allah's help is going to come. It's not going to come like that. It doesn't usually come like that. But we have to make the first step and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I really want it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out. And the next verse says, وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And he will provide from ways you couldn't even imagine. He will provide from ways you couldn't even think about. So you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ways you couldn't have even thought. That, wow, from here my solution came. What from this situation my solution came? Yeah, a person may be um, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he gets married and then his marriage just comes out of the blue. Or something happens and somebody, you know, he's fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's keeping his halal job but he's not making enough money but he's fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then a phone call comes 
from an old friend. Hey, I've got a really big business. I need somebody. I'm going to pay this much money. Come. And where did it come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide from him from places he couldn't even imagine. So think about that. Your help will come from places you didn't even know. You never even thought about that and it came from there. And the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And this is one of my favorite verses because it gives us hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, say to the people, say what? Oh, my slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking and he's saying, oh, my slaves who have transgressed themselves, who have done wrong, all oh, my slaves who have done wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind, he's calling us slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-halim. I just want to mention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-halim. He continues seeing us do the sins day and night, and he gives us time. He doesn't take punishment. He doesn't give us punishment. He gives us time that we can turn back to him, we can repent to him. He's so nice. But he gives us time. He doesn't just take everything away from us when we've done so many sins. He keeps on giving us time that we will come back, that we will come back. So flee to Allah. He gives us time that we can flee back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so he's so kind, alhamdulillah. We have a Lord like that who's so kind. He says, O oh my slaves who have transgressed themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. He is oft forgiving, most merciful. So don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Don't think I have had it, I have done. There was somebody who did 99 murders. In fact, he did 100 murders. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the dimensions of the earth in order to forgive him. 90, 100 murders. Okay? Our sins, we're not, we've not killed, inshallah, even one person. Okay? So our sins aren't too great for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive everything. He forgives shirk while we're living, if we've done it. So there's nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot forgive. So don't despair of the mercy of Allah. He'll forgive all sins. But there's a condition in the next verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and turn in repentance and in obedience with true faith to your Lord and submit to him before the torment comes upon you, then you will not be helped. So we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He's so merciful. He's given us this life. He's made us Muslim. He's given us so much. He's so merciful. When somebody returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the person who repents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not just delete those deeds, those haram things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. He won't delete those haram things. He will change them into beautiful deeds and they'll go on our right, on our good scale. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the haram that we did into beautiful reward and it'll go on our, you know, for, it'll go onto the, the scale of rewards. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and he provides for us ways. We just need to show him that we need to get out of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy. I hope there's some tips in there or something that people could relate to and try. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us out of all the sins that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all the sins that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable this to reach those people who are... Who are um, addicted to sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to come out of our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us and give us an for those. Jazakumullah khairan subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka.